You may not recognize this building. It's the back of Buckingham Palace, and I'm here today to assist in the judging of the Prince Philip Design Awards in their 50th year. That's 50 years of the Prince celebrating, championing British design. Uh, these awards were organized at first by the Design Center, which then became the Design Council, who still organized the thing. But for 50 years, the Prince has chaired these awards and taken a really passionate interest in them. I'm, I'm very interested to see uh, just what his input's going to be. Afterwards, we're going to have a chat also about his passion for design and his belief in these, uh, in these rather exceptional awards. Uh, so, Your Royal Highness, we're fresh out of the, uh, the judging of this year's awards in the 50th year since their inception in 1959. So, tell me, what was it that got you sparked up, that got you fired up about, about them in the first place? Why did you start them? Well, I got quite interested in, in uh, the des well, f for various reasons. There was, if you remember, there was the Festival of Britain, and I got to know various people there who'd done things for it. And, I, and, and, and you look to, to see the new generation of, of design of all sorts in, in, the, in the festival. And then soon after that, um, Britannia was built. And so we had to find people to do the interior design and, and everything else for it. And eventually, Hugh Casson was recommended. So you suddenly got involved in how do you, what, what do you put in the bathroom, what do you put in a bedroom, what, what, what sort of door handles, what sort of cups and saucers, what sort of furniture, do you know? So, and it, 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 it brought home to me that, that people were sitting there designing these things. You mentioned that it was a period of uh, functionality and then brutality. And and yet the award was given for elegant. Design. Well, that was the point, exactly that, to try and get back to design plus, uh, functionalism plus, if, if you know what I mean. Mm. There was an initially, if I'm right, a, a, a suspicion that it would be given for almost historic design, but actually that wasn't no, to be the case. These were for the very, very, very engineered and, and some of them quite functional objects. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 the pack away refrigerator, for instance, it's all very well now. You look back and say, well, it's, you know, it's, but what you, what you didn't know is what it was competing against in other refrigerators, which were hideous beyond words. I mean, they were round and bulging and they offensive. You know. This was, you know, a functional, clean, competent design. So you've got to look at it in, in, in comparison to what else was going on. You, so when we say elegant, we mean elegance in terms of the resolution of the design, an elegant solution. Yeah, elegant solution, but also something which is just a bit better than the ordinary. You know, yes, it's easy enough to do a functional design, but you've got to add something to it. You've got to, it's got to be... It doesn't have to be gothic. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But it, and it, doesn't, it needs to be more classical, and, uh, which, which, is, which is a function, but, 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 but nicely proportioned function. And um, do you see, then, the importance of design as, as being something central to our existence? Is it, is it that fundamental? No, but it makes existence a lot better, doesn't it? I mean, it, 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 makes, uh, it makes it worthwhile. And you, it, it makes it a positive experience rather than just having to you know, struggle through it. Mm. I mean, I think that street furniture, for instance, I mean, why, why should um, attractive things only be in the home? Why, why, why can't they be outside where you, where you see them and where everybody can enjoy them? You know? mm. what's, your, uh, what's your feeling about and the design, and you've probably you've met many, I'm sure. Uh, do, are they a breed, Design. designers? Do you find them a breed apart? Well, I think uh, designers and architects, yes, I think all, all original thinkers have got a, a, a sort of quality which you could probably recognise. I mean, all architects wear ties with horizontal stripes, for instance. <laughs> or no tie at all. Well, <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> Over the last 50 years, have you seen any big changes in the design landscape? I think what... what it obviously has changed is that it's it's really corporate decision now, it's corporate taste as opposed to individual taste. I mean, if you go back what, to the 18th century, for instance, to make it or the 19th century, the, the all the design advances were really created by individual taste. I mean, a, a, a wealthy man uh, decided to do his own thing and... and uh, Whereas now it's the corporate 
it's either a corporation or it's government or it's local government that does it. So um, the chances of, of really producing something exceptional are much less because I think it's the, it's yeah, the interaction yeah, between yeah. a patron and a, and a designer or an architect that produces the great things. I think corporate relationships are, 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 much, are quite different. I mean, the, project, but the end product is different. Yeah. You go back to the Great Exhibition, where the, what the Prince Consort was trying to do was to try and say, look, you've got to have a marriage of art and manufacturing and, and engineering in order to produce good stuff. And, and uh, I think that they then split again, and, then, and I think they're gradually coming together. And I think one of the f factors was that uh, companies used to em employ a designer, or stylist, whatever you like to call it. Um, but curiously enough, if you employ somebody, he wants to do what you want him to do. And I... I came to the conclusion that it was much better for companies who want to really do well with their design to have, to contract with somebody to design for them. And I think, A, it, it, because it then gives the designer much greater authority because he can argue and say, well, OK, you, you said I'm going to design this. If you don't like my design, I'm off, so you get somebody else. Mm. The corollary, of course, of, of, of craftsmanship is, is value, how we value the made world. Do you see a deterioration in that as we, we're buying more and more consumables? No, no, I think people are very tolerant. Why they go on tolerating these ghastly things? I mean, as I say, the, the whole, your whole relationship between the television set and the, and the... I mean, you used to put it on the floor, do you remember? And then they put the controls on the bottom. So you had to lie on the floor. And then if you wanted to record something, the recorder was underneath. So you ended up lying on the floor with a torch in your teeth magnifying glass and the instruction book. I then oh, you had to employ a grandson of age 10 to do it for you. Yeah. When you think how... If you look at the um, a fascia panel in a car and just think uh, from a user's point of view, you, A, you can't see the, the, most of them because they're, they, they reflect or there's a, there's a dial with a bright aluminium circle so that it blinds you, you can't see what's inside the dial. You, you have a, a, a fuel gauge, for instance, which tells you how much fuel you've got left. Well, if you could stop and think for a minute, if you, go, if you think you're running out, you go into a, 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 a garage, you want to know how much to put in, don't you? Yeah, well, that's what I call design. <laughs> why should we celebrate these individuals and why continue doing so? Well, I would hope that... that the fact that there is an award <laughs> for designers and they, 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 if you're a young designer, you, you, you then associate the, the designer with what he's designed might have the effect on thinking, well, this is something worth doing. You know, here's, here's a chap who is a designer who's been recognised in public, is lionised, is, is, is a, a, a huge success. I want to be one of those. <laughs> I thought that was a really interesting discussion because here is the man, Prince Philip, who is, is clearly excited still by what he sees and who has seen extraordinary change over the last 50 years in society, in our culture, uh, in technology, but at the same time he's been able to identify these lasting values in good quality design. Um, beauty even, uh, certainly fitness for purpose, practicality, ergonomics, one of his big passions. and and the sort of sense of value of the made world that, that underscores the, the, the quality in our built environment. It's, it's really exciting to see, to see a man at his age still absolutely engaged with stuff, with the built world around us. <laughs>